Hey guys, Sesma coming at you here with another deck profile and today I'll be showcasing my friend Joey Invoke True, De True Draco deck profile. He actually, I'll let him explain to it, but he actually topped 64 in regionals with using this same deck. Uh, he, he fared pretty well against uh, today's meta and I'll let him explain and go more into detail about how he plays the deck, what his card choices are. So let's get into it. Let's get in the main. So we're going to be showcasing the main deck, extra deck and side deck. So let's get into it, Joey. Alright, so the preface, I got 52. Um, now, for those of you who have uh, expensive cards, it's say Ash Blossom and Cosmic Cyclone. Those were the only two that I was missing against uh, the only deck I lost, Pendulum Magicians. Which, by the way, this is done pretty damn good against now. And I've even beaten uh, Spirals with it, 2-0. 2-0, oh, nice, nice, Joy. Yeah, Alright, let's start off with the uh, main engine. Of course, uh, with Invoked in the name, Alice, 3 Alistairs, just because they're mandatory. Uh, <laughs> He's your searcher, searches yeah. your invocation. Searches, uh, you go, just keep going in the monster line. Just keep going in monster line. Alright, All right, I'll get to the rest later then. Just the three Alishes because it's mandatory. We'll get the spellbook engine here. Just because, again, absolutely mandatory. That draw power lets you go into Cositis, which is pretty good against Pendulum Magician as well. He can't be destroyed by the stupid Zion Bellinograph. It can't be targeted by it as well. And it can't be popped by their BS either. You guys know what I'm talking about. Let's see, so the spellback engine here, when blue boy, these are my ratios as well, just two, just because this deck draws so damn much, you don't want to dead draw into another one of these. Easy, these search out each other, and then the rest just search out, searches itself out, and then from there, you just normal or special summon crap. So I'll leave that there for now. Obviously, invocations. Uh, by the way, here's a quick tip. If you get hit by Droll and Lockbird, thanks to my buddy who learned the hard way, you can add this back from the graveyard and Alistair back to your hand because Droll and Lockbird doesn't stop you from using graveyard or adding from graveyard or remove from play pile. But anti spell does. Just, just speak yeah. up, dude. Just speak up. Alright. Let's get into the true Draco monster lineup. Two Majesty Maidens, just because they allow you to search out. I'll explain some of the combos with that later. Your only one, which searches spells, and it also lets you go into Purgatorio, which lets you OTK fairly easily. Purgatorio is really important in this Invoke deck, right? Yes, that's why it's also good to have the Ash Blossoms in here as well. If you're in a pinch, you can OTK it. Thank you for. Um, let's see. Oh, one Miriam. So the combo with her is pretty much you pop her with, uh, or I'll show you. I'll show you in a second when the cards pop up two masterpieces just because three would be pretty bricky and two seems like the golden ratio have you tried running three i, I have not but from what i've heard even in the uh, pure true draco three gets really really bricky all right all right and let's see oh we've already come into the monsters of the deck when i top 52 i didn't even have i didn't even have a single ash blossom and i only had one of these so the deck is a little modified from then which is why I've been doing pretty good against um, Pendulum Magicians. I hate you. So two Ash Blossoms, pretty much mandatory now. But yep. you don't need to. Invoke just pretty well on its own. But again, you know, they help you go into a Prigger Trio. And even if you don't have that, boom, you have yourself a Fire One. Your Ignis Heat. Exactly. Um, you can either do two or three. That depends on your preference. By the way, let's add in the third. As you can see, these are tins and this is an ulti. Funny story about this one, I actually got second place against some D-bag in uh, the locals, in which case um, I beat them in the preliminary rounds or before finals. We get to finals and I finally lose, get second place, but I ended up pulling a ulti Ghost Reaper so and I've been running it ever since. So you technically won the tournament? Yeah, I technically won that tournament. Yep, good job, dude. And then Maxi, just because I'm pretty much a staple in every deck now. Uh, three terraforming just because it allows you to go into either your magical meltdown or diagram and unfortunately and I should be getting the third diagram soon but I'm just play, still working out with this deck it's been going pretty damn well so far but still three diagrams can never hurt so if you can get your hands on the third one that'd be that'd still be good for you so what card would you take out if you were to run the third diagram Honestly, I might just add in the third. Right now, I'm running at 41 cards. 41 cards, right. okay. Oh, and while we're at it, I can show you the combo, one combo right now with Miriam and Diagram. Um, Miriam's effect is if she's popped by a spell, or just popped or, dis or destroyed from anywhere, you get to, by uh, card effect, by the way, you get to add one uh, non-wind worm monster. So pretty much, uh, Miriam lets you either Ignis Heat or, or Masterpieces. 
and then you still get the search from diagram but there, she has more combos than just diagram which I'll show you in a second so let's put the why not the, two magical meltdowns joy uh, two magical meltdowns just because um, I found it to be a little bricky like there's a variant I tried running with uh, set rotation as well where you could give them a deck that, that, that can't use magical meltdown you could give them the brick but um, three seems sufficient so far especially since it's only once per turn okay and normally you only need one Alistair in hand anyway. Uh, let's go into the True Draco line of cards. The spells are pretty much uh, mandatory. Uh, normally you don't want to banish this with Masterpiece unless you absolutely have to. Because these recycle everything for you. What's, do, what's True Draco, what's Disciples do and what's Heritage do? Alright, so Disciples um, has three effects. Has the pop effect that every true Draco spell and trap have. Uh, second, of course, has the tribute summon effect. And then the real kicker is it allows you to recycle three true Draco or true king cards from your graveyard and add them to your hand and draw one. So, as I mentioned before, the only reason I ran and ran this in such a small ratio is because this deck has so, so much draw power. Alright. And as for true Draco heritage, by the way, heads up, this also uh, works in your favor if it's a mirror match. So if uh, some of their true Draco cards get sent to the graveyard, you can still plus off of it with this effect. And as you can imagine, a lot of the top decks still play true Draco, so you can plus like crazy off of it. Pot of Desires, just two. You don't want to, you don't want to use one and then draw into another Pot of Desires, which you can't use anyway. Why Pot of Desires? Do you ever fear uh, banishing? important cards I do and then I don't at times um I always make sure I have uh, I've used Alistair's effect also I use um one to bait out the other so and I pretty much uh, let my opponent choose whether he wants to uh, ash blossom this or the Alistair but of course I'll try to if I can I try to use uh, or get Alistair for invocation first I don't mind getting a uh, pot of desire so much I just don't want to get Alistair hit. nice nice so draw power over here Two cosmic cyclones just because these are fucking fantastic right now. Um, again, so true Dracos, you always want to use these on any of these two or the trap cards, which will be coming up in just a second. Which, by the way, those also have a combo with Miriam. Also, against Pendulum Magicians, the shit you always want to get rid of is triple pull. And three if you want, but um, and then side them out if you want as well. So j that's also another good option with these is if whatever depending on what you're playing against. For example, uh, trick stars you could side them out pretty easily. So that's always uh, how. So not only are they good for removing shit, they're also pretty flexible as well in uh, in, the, in the deck. Oh, another combo just in case. Um, as far as game mechanics go, you can activate Dragonic Diagram, chain Cosmic Cyclone to banish something. And the way the way it works is um, Cosmic Cyclone doesn't leave the field until the combo is or the chain has ended. So you can use and Diagram doesn't target. So you can technically use Cosmic Cyclone's effect and then pop it with Diagram to get the search. But that's just uh, some game mechanics help right there. And then last but not least, and possibly one of the most important pieces, the trap card lineup. Now, as I mentioned earlier, aside from Diagram, you all. True Draco Heritage help, it also helps Miriam because you, uh, the card text says True Draco or True King Monster and well Miriam happens to be True Draco so you can pop her for um, True Draco Apocalypse's effect get a plus off of her and still use its effect and then if you have a monster you can still tribute for it so again um, two of these is just my preference but you can also tribute for that this and of course Masterpiece and then again for more pluses if you like if you prefer to play the grind game you can activate true draco or true king's return activate summon that hit with uh dragonic diagram pop and just keep plusing off of that but again it depends on your playstyle whether you want to be aggressive or go for the grind game all right so let's say you're playing at locals a lot of the times let's say at my locals there's a cosmo player nothing but lights and darks and it's usually the lights that get banished so many times I end up bringing out Kaliga. Not just that, you also have to remember he's a level 4, which I'll go into Nixie's play out later. 
But um, aside from the fact that he has crappy stats, he has a pretty good effect, especially if you're playing against Spiral, which it came in pretty clutch, by the way. Um, what Kaliga does is it uh, prevents you and your opponent opponent from, uh, or it doesn't prevent, it limits both of you to one monster attacking per turn and one monster effect. Meaning if they u use uh, Quick Fix's effect, that's all they're getting for the rest of the turn. And there's no way Spirals can get over this by alone with just one attack. So he's not as bad as people think. And again, he has a lot more utility for later. And when you finally get ready to get rid of him, you can tribute him for a true Draco monster or pop it with Diagram. Next, Invocation. There are Raijin. The Book of Moon, and actually, I believe it's either uh, second or third best out of all the Invoke monsters. Um, another game mechanic, another helpful tip as far as game mechanics goes. Um, Magical Meltdown protects him from uh, using his Book of Moon effect on Summon. So the way it works is because he's a spell speed 2 card, on Summon you declare effect to Book of Moon a monster. Uh, I'll just call it, for uh, sense of purposes, I'll just call it Book of Moon. Um, in which case, Magical Pro Meltdown protects it from, or prevents your opponent from respawning to it. So that means you, it can't be hit by Ghost Ogre, Effect Failure, or even Solemn Strike. And while we're at it as well, right on summon as well, you could even twin twister if you want it. But again, that's just another quick tip in game mechanics. One cool side is just because honestly he has the least utility, but he's a damn good wall. Normally you'll only bring him out if you offer blue boy, or if you're against paleo, which honestly this deck has a pretty good lineup against. Or a pretty good matchup against. Purgatrio, my favorite one, but I wouldn't say he's the best. He actually won me my first uh, box tournament as well, by the way. <laughs> Purgatrio for game. Yeah, normally you'll make him with either Ignis Heat or even the Dreaded Ash Blossoms. We'll just uh, leave this here. These go into that. Again, they're pretty good if you need to OTK or board wipe. I actually won a game against Spirals with these two puppies here. Just one, he couldn't respond to it. He had his full board, as you can imagine, baited out his sleeper, baited out uh, bloody hell, I can't remember. Oh, uh, Firewall Dragon. So after that, just I had, luckily or coincidentally, I had two of these in great or one of these in graveyard. Ended up popping uh, or ended up using four Purgatrio and just pretty much OTK'd. His monsters didn't die, but he took plenty of damage just because I had two Alistairs in hand. Alright, let's move on to the next one. Invoke Magellanica. Two, just because they're the big beaters and, you know, you never know when you're going to play against uh, an Earth deck. Not too much to say about them since they're vanillas, but that's they're still needed in the deck. It, even at that one, you could actually cut this down to one if you want. And then everybody's favorite, and possibly the best, uh, Macabre negates and banishes, not just destroys, but you also have to match it with the same card that you're banishing. By the way, this also works if they use if they use Pendulum Monsters as a spell. Uh, another good thing about or one thing you have to remember though is he's really only good if you're ahead if, or have uh, some resources. It kind of sucks ass if you're low on resources and you bring this guy up. But again, still in the best. Mm -hmm. Elysium, rarely does he come out, but if you can bring him out, uh, uh, sometimes it's not even that worth it unless you have to absolutely banish, let's say in the, in the case of Pendulums. Um, what he does is you can banish one invoked monster on the field or graveyard, and banish monsters on your opponent's side of the field with that same element. But you have to keep in mind it's a quick effect, and this monster counts as six elements. So he would banish all monsters on your opponent's side of the field face that are face up. So you could banish Elysium pretty much and banish your opponent's entire board. Yeah, exactly, and that's why it's so good against Pendulums too. When you force their and you force their hands to do well, terrible dragon, you bring it up pretty easily with one Alistair. And as I explained earlier, this is a level four, so you would summon that on your turn, summon the Alistair, get the effect, overlay, and now you have a card to pop on their side of the field on your turn or on either player's turn. So there's a utility and it's a win in case you need another target. And last of, and last but not least, Proxy Dragon, which my buddy here is confused as to why. Uh, let me explain here for 
for the moment. You st say you're stuck with the monster you no longer need, uh, Kaliga, and you don't need a pro uh, tornado dragon. So what, what the fuck do you do here? You have to get rid of a fucking proxy dragon. All right, so you link to. You got yourself a light target. You're like, why the fuck this doesn't even point down? But it's a light target, and you also have to remember. This is one, probably the only way you'll bring out Elysium in a deck without ex expending too many resources. So the play you would do here, if I can find a fucking card, Invocation, for either Elysium, or banish these two for Elysium, or banish this and the Alistair in your grave for a Macabre. So no matter what, you almost always have targets for Macabre, which is considered the best invoked. We have it we went into the main deck you know my buddy described a bit of each of his card choices we went into the extra deck he explained some combos now let's get into the side deck he's gonna make it as brief as possible cards he'd side in or side out depending on his matchups what he'd play and why he plays it so let's get into it Jared. let's get into that side deck all right so against uh mirrors or pure two dracos or even pendulums as i said these two are mvps and the fact that they're continuous traps means you can also tribute them for your true draco monsters so again, amazing. And you can banish it mas for Masterpiece. 1D Barrier, which I'm going to cut it up, or put it up to more. Uh, should be self-explanatory. Cuts Bar out everything? Yeah. M it's Remember good that it's coming and coming. Yeah. Um, Imperial Order. Again, shuts down a crap load of decks. It's a continuous uh, trap card, so you can banish it for Masterpiece's effect, or even tribute for Masterpiece. Um, again, I can't go too much into this, but again, it, it just wrecks other decks, even other... Uh, true Dracos, or forces them to misplay. Anti spell fragrances, continuous trap cards that can fuck over pendulums, and even other true Draco card players. Ghost Reapers, mirror match. Um, I should be getting another double helix pretty soon for uh, spirals. Denko Sekas just to fuck with Paleos, uh, or if you even use your combo for anti spell fragrance. That I'm actually going to be taking out soon for another for another D barrier. Or I might even main it if I have the room. Zapions, again, Pendulum Magicians, other true Dracos, or just even any other decks. And by the way, another combo, if you tribute a Zapion with with the spell cards, you get the draw. And Santa Claus. Just because they're new just because they're like kaijus and if you get and if you're playing against a world chalice, then you bring out Gamma Seal with the Gyoto Waterfront. You can get rid of their gamma seal with these. So Santa Claus is more effective than a kaiju because you can't kaiju a kaiju, yes. and he's basically a light target for Makaba without yeah. having to use Jirikiz Jizukiru uh -huh. or the Thunder King. Yes, that's a good choice, Joy. And I mean, come on, fucking Santa Claus. It's Santa Claus. We're getting into the winter season, so you know we got to get into that winter spirit. And there we go. This deck topped the uh, 52 at Los Angeles Regionals without Ash Blossoms or Cosmic Cyclones. So there you guys have it. This is my friend Joey's Invoke deck profile. These are his card choices. You are free to change any of them as you please. We understand that some of the card choices are a little bit on the more unconventional, side. unconventional side. So it's all right. A lot of these choices were because of the meta. I expected a lot of Pendulum Magicians, which is one of the few decks that gives this deck any troubles. Um, as you can imagine, the uh, deck that got first place was Pendulum Magicians. And as I mentioned before as well, I didn't have Ash Blossoms or Cosmics at the time, but I do now, and as you'd imagine, I fucked them up. But, uh, but, uh, yeah. And as I said, that's also the reason why I had two Kaligas, because they also send a lot of, uh, they also use a lot of monster effects during a turn, and limiting to, them to one is just fucking killer. And sometimes even worth it sending one of your Alistairs from hand just to make the Kaliga, if you can protect it, of course. Um, other than that, yeah, you can use it as Ixie's material for whatever you want as well. It doesn't have to be Tornado Dragon either. And there you have it. You can even use Baguska in here now. So thank you guys for watching. We really appreciate it. The Invoke deck, the Invoke core is one of my favorite decks to play. Or it's one of my favorite cores to play in any deck for the reason that you basically just need one card to go off. Uh, you basically just need an Alistair, a Terraforming, or a Magical Meltdown. The reason that I like terraforming is well, the reason that I like invoke so much is because it's pretty much a one card boss monster if you don't get interrupted. And also speaking of interruptions, invoke is a deck where you can play so many hand traps, so many cards to disrupt. 
it's pretty much a, a engine by itself so mixing it with true dracos the the draw power and the raw power that true dracos offer mixed with the elements and the diagram just makes this deck a powerhouse it's easily uh what will we say top five a top five deck to yeah. play against it, it it's very consistent very good it's pretty consistent it has really good draw power and it's able to make makaba and masterpiece relatively easily I've, I've managed to bring out our half boards and with uh, two masterpieces and a macabre on field. Which is pretty, pretty yeah. scummy. That, yeah, it pretty much just makes my opponent scoop. Alright. So, thank you guys for watching. We really appreciate it. Like, comment, subscribe. Drop something down in the comment section. Let us know. Uh, but that's it for today, guys. Appreciate it. Sesma is out. So is Joey for the first time. <laughs> Sesma and Joey, out. out.